colonize this country before it erupts into civil war. Okay? Support the right-wing conservative forces. Buy money, buy crooks or love, doesn't matter. Stabilize the country. Don't let the crisis develop into, into civil war or invasion. Oh, no, your liberals will say it's, it's against the law. The Congress will not appropriate money for covert actions of CIA. Why not? Should we wait till the normalization come and Soviet tanks land in, in, in Los Angeles airport? Now, at that point, at the point of destabilization, also the process could be reversed. Again, easily than this. No CIA involvement at this point. You know what it takes here? Restriction of some liberties for small groups which are self-declared enemies of the society. As simple as that. Oh no, the media and liberals will tell you this is against the American Constitution. How can we, uh, by force, deny the civil rights to criminals, for example? It's, it's not good. Okay? So we allow them to... Okay, if you allow the criminals to have civil rights, go on and bring the country to the crisis. This is a bloodless way to do Curb the rights. I mean, not to put them in prison. No, no, I'm not talking about putting all the gays from San Francisco in the concentration camp. Do not allow them <laughs> to take political force. Do not elect them to the seats of power, whether it is municipality level, state level, or federal level. It has to be bitten in the heads of American voters that a person like that in the seats of power is an enemy. Do not be afraid of this word. It is an enemy. If he is not an enemy here, he will be here. Later on, he will be shot, of course. <laughs> but at this point, he is an enemy. Okay? You are doing great service by denying him a right to capitalize on his own crazy ideas and become a powerful man, a, a man who uses the seat of power. Restriction of certain freedoms and permissiveness at that point would prevent sliding into crisis and probably will return the process of destabilization. To curb unlimited power, monopolistic power of trade unions here at that point would save economy from collapsing. To introduce a law to stop private companies of raping public opinion's mind in, con in, the, in the direction of consumerism. No company must have a right to force you into buying more unless you want it. There must be a law. You want to advertise your, your car? Okay. But not a single mentioning of buying it now and saving money. <laughs> it must be against the law to force people to consume more. Self-restraint, previously, before this process started, the self-restraint was a business of church, religion. Because our preachers, the fathers of church, would tell us, material values are good, but it's not the prime function of human being. Because you have to live with something. Obviously, the design for our life is not to consume more deodorants <laughs> there must be something greater. If such a complicated instrument as human body was created, obviously there must be some higher purpose for that. And it's very easy to avoid destabilization by denying the greedy companies one little freedom, one little liberty, forcing you into turning yourself into processors of unwanted pr products and goods. They turn you into machines, like a, 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 the worm who there's inlet and outlet. So, and how long a, a, an average appliance lasts these days? Less than a year. Why? Where's workmanship? Oh, we want you to buy more. Okay. Destabilization process could be easily overcome if, as I say, the society by its own will or after persuasion by the leaders will come to the idea of self-restraint. 
it's so hard we want to consume more but you have to unless you will come to this stage when as we say in Russia if Sahara Desert ever becomes a communist state there'll be shortage of sand <laughs> so you have to curb your <laughs> You have, to, you have to curb your expectations at this point before it's too late. But no, we don't want to do it. Demoralization process. Again, it's the easiest thing to reverse. First of all, by restricting import of propaganda. The easiest thing to do. Unlimited, unrestrained import of Soviet literature, Soviet journalists. Uh, giving Soviet propaganda and ideological agitators equal time on American TV network. It has to be stopped. And it's easy. They won't, they won't be offended, mind you. As a matter of fact, they will respect America more. But when my former colleague Vladimir Posner appears on Nightline and Ted Koppel asks him, Well, Vladimir, what do you think about this? What can he think? He is an instrument of propaganda. He thinks what, what, what Comrade Andropov tells him to think. <laughs> he is just a nice, articulate mouthpiece of the Soviet uh, uh, subversion system. And Ted Koppel makes you believe that my friend Vladimir Posner thinks... <laughs> <laughs> the process of demoralization may not have started at all if at that point the country which is a recipient of subversion actively not violently but actively prevents importation of foreign ideology I don't want America to follow the pattern of ancient Japan you don't have to shoot every foreigner when it approaches the sacred borders of the United States but when he offers you a junk in the disguise of very shiny something, you have to tell him, no, we have our own junk. <laughs> <laughs> if at that point the society is strong, brave, and conscientious enough to stop importation of ideas which are foreign, then the whole chain of events could be prevented. Recently I've been to Philippines and I was shocked how in big cities like Manila children listen to deafening music. A melodious nation with long traditions of, of good, nice ethnic music introduced by Spanish long time ago, maybe two centuries, three centuries ago, I don't remember how long all of a sudden listen to musical garbage blasting their radios at, at full blast at the full volume why in India I spent many years watching the reactions of Indians walking out of movie theaters after seeing Hollywood production they they couldn't figure out why Americans are so wasteful? They smash their cars, their shiny cars every five minutes. How come they shoot each other for half million dollars? 